Nobody can stop God's work. Nobody. I'm telling you the truth. But if you are not committed, if you are not working, whatever you are doing, if you are not doing it well, if you are lazy about it, then there is a challenge. But if you are committed to whatever you are doing with seriousness and you are not lazy about it, I'm telling you nobody, according to this scripture, is born to take, to stop God's work in your life. They will try to stop you from working. They will, start, they will try to stop you from anything they, you are doing in the house of the Lord. But if you are committed, you are not lazy, no devil, no witch, no wizard. Nobody is permitted to stop God's work in my life. Lift up your right hand and say, my father, my father, I have made up my mind not to be lazy this year. Nobody, I can't hear you say, nobody is permitted to stop God's work in my life this year. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Nobody is permitted to stop God's work. Nobody, no witch, no wizard, no occultic power, nobody is permitted to stop God's work in my life. No pastor. I have made up my mind not to be lazy, O oh Lord. And I have made up my mind to do the work of God. And I have made up my mind to do it with all diligence, with all seriousness this year. Nobody is permitted to stop me from whatever I'm doing in the house of the Lord. Please pray that prayer very well. Nobody is permitted to stop us from doing God's work. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please let me pray that prayer again to your neighbors. Nobody is permitted to stop God's work in your life, in this church. In Jesus' name, we pray. We will be having a meeting with, with, the, with the ministers this afternoon, which is very, very crucial. Which is very, very... We cannot continue to do church as usual. There must be some... In fact, church is becoming so complicated these days that we need to look at the approach. What works in 20 years ago is no more working for the church. And there are other things that we need to go back. The Bible says, remove not the ancient landmarks. So many things that has to do with church growth. So please, this, that meeting, meeting is very crucial. And then after that meeting, we also have a meeting with the HOD and the assistant and the workers so that we'll be able to tell us what we need to do to keep on moving. But nobody, like I've said, nobody is permitted to stop God's work in our life. Nobody can stop it. It depends on our own attitude. And the Almighty God will bless us in Jesus' name. So after this meeting, which is very crucial today, we will begin to unfold through the ministers in charge to us what it will entail for us to move forward in 2019 and what God has for the church. For the late comers, because of time, what the Lord said in my spirit to do, that you should do is evangelism. That's something that is, is very, very crucial in God's heart this year and which is so willing. So who is the HOD for evangelism? It's even late. Can you see? We need to really re-strategize. I will have asked you to go and evangelize at the Tazi rank this morning. But 
because of time, and I want you to be in the part of the service. Can I have the details of every one of them? By when do you have your evangelism time? Only Saturday. We need to also take the church from just one Saturday now. But please write their names, and they have to be in that evangelism on Saturday by 4 p.m. Put all their name. What God said, as we tell you, those people that are late, is that go and evangelize for me. Go and win souls for me. So by 4 p.m. on Saturday, all of you must do two hours of evangelism. Do we have tracks? If they fail to do it, it's between you and God. That's what I had in my spirit. Evangelism. Two hours on Saturday, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., they must go and evangelize for God. Win souls. Preach the gospel. Go everywhere in this environment. And the Almighty God will bless you as you do. Let's lift up our hands and just thank the Lord as we go into the first service. Shall we just move forward? They may not even write their name. Don't worry. If they lie, don't come. They should not come. It's disobedience to God. So don't even write their name. I've already said it. Those people that came late, 4 p.m. on Saturday, two hours of evangelism. That's what the Lord said you should do. The rest of us, let's come forward. Let's lift up our hands. And let's thank the Lord for what God will do in this service. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things he hath done unto the Lord. Church, let's move forward. Let's move forward unto the Lord. Be the glory. Great things he hath done unto the Lord. Let's settle down, please. We are in the presence of the Lord. Let's settle down. Let's settle down. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's begin to appreciate God once again for giving us the grace to be in his presence this morning. The Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy. At his right hand there are pleasure forevermore. Brethren, let's appreciate God for the journey of 2019. Let's bless his holy name. Let's worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Let's adore him. Let's thank him for his grace, his mercies, his love over our lives. Let's appreciate him. Let's honor him. Let's adore him. Father, we praise your name. We worship you. We thank you for another opportunity you have given unto us to be in your presence this morning, to appreciate you, to glorify you, to thank you for all the wonderful things you have been doing in our lives. Daddy, we are grateful unto you for safekeeping us, O oh Lord. Thank you for what you have been doing. We glorify your holy name. We worship you in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says only the living can praise the Lord. This morning, I want you to open your mouth and say, Father, I thank you for counting me worthy among the living. Let's praise him. Lord, we thank you for counting us worthy among the living. Thank you for the divine sustenance. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your awesome presence. Daddy, we praise your holy name. We worship you, O Lord. You are the King of kings. You are the God of gods, the Lord of lords, the I am that I am. You are the Yahweh of the tribe of Judah, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley. We lift your name above every other names. There is none like you. 
Glory be to you in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Brethren, let us begin to plead the blood of Jesus upon our lives. That let his blood come and purify us this morning. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus upon our lives. Let your blood, let it purify us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, for every sins we have committed, O Lord. Father, have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon your church in the mighty name of Jesus. Wash us at you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. Brethren, I want you to pray that, Father, I have come into your presence this morning. Let your glory overshadow my life in the name of Jesus. Let's turn that to, pray, to prayer this morning. Father, I have come to your presence this morning. Let your glory come down mightily upon my lives in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not go back home the same way I come this morning. Father, I pray that I will have an encounter with you in the mighty mighty name of Jesus. Visit us, O Lord God, in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Church, we will pray this morning that as the word of God shall be coming this morning, it will touch my life, it will touch my situation, it will have an impact in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's turn that to prayer. Father, that word that will set me free, that word that will deliver me, that word that will heal me, Father, send it unto me in the mighty name of Jesus. The power in your word, O oh Lord, let it transform my life this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I glorify your holy name, for in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And so everlasting Father, we want to worship you this morning. You have been a faithful Father to us. You have been wonderful. You have been loving. You have been very kind. We cannot deny your goodness upon our lives. Daddy, we have started the year by your mercy. You have been our solid foundation. Lord, it is two weeks, O oh Lord God, that we have started the year. We cannot deny what you have been doing. Thank you for the divine preservation. Thank you for the divine provision. Thank you for the victories you have already started giving us. Daddy, we appreciate your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus. As a church, we are gathered before you this morning to appreciate you for what you have done and what you are going to do. Father, accept our thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as your word shall be coming this morning, let your word come powerfully. Let it come with meaning. Let it come with healing. Let it come with deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. That situation of my life that needs your word this morning, as the word shall be coming, let it touch it in the name of Jesus. At the end, let your name be glorified. Father, we are gathered before your awesome presence, not before any other God. Let your glory come down in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. And so we declare the service open in, God, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So shall it be. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is there anybody in church this morning? You want to testify to the goodness of the Lord? God has done something mighty, something powerful, and you can testify that God has been the one that has done it. Please, you can just step out or indicate. Is there anybody this morning that wants to give testimony? Praise the Lord. Can we just lift our hands up and just magnify him? Father, we worship you. Father, we give you praise. I want you to just open your mouth and just thank him. Let's take this time and give him praise. Let's just give him all the glory. Father, we worship you. We lay down every heaviness of God and put on the garment of praise. Somebody open your mouth and just give him praise. Where two or more are gathered in his name is then their midst. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. This is how I fight my battles. 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 Can we sing together? This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. One more time. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I find my The other one go this way. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. 
It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Can you sing with me? It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. One more time. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Come on. This is how I fight my battles. 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 This is how I fight my is worship we know that you will fight for us oh God come on just lift your voice and tell him Lord we have come to fight in our praise in our worship open your mouth and just magnify him lift your voice and just give him praise give him praise give him praise give him praise father we worship you we give you praise we exalt you, we exalt you, we exalt you. Magnify his name. We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship him now. How great. How awesome is he? Holy is the Lord. 
to be praised. He's the Alpha and Omega. Father, we worship you. Father, we exalt you. Hallelujah. I want us to do this hymn, crown him with many crowns. Crown him with many crowns. Crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon his throne. Can we sing together? Hug, hug the heavenly unturned strong. All music but its own. Awake my soul and sing. the 
first verse. Just the first verse. Crown with many crown. seconds just open your mouth and thank him thank him the one who died for us the one who rose again give him all the worship that is due him father we magnify you we exalt you we give you all the praise hallelujah amen come on put your hands together let's just give him praise hallelujah Amen. How many of us want to praise God with me? Just in five minutes, you want to praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. There is something that makes me run into your presence, my helper. There is something that makes me run into your presence, my helper.
acceptable unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please may we have our seats. I have a good, great news for us this morning. And the news is that we are in his presence. God is here. Amen. I want you to welcome your neighbor to his presence. Welcome to the presence of the living God. God is here. Amen. Now, it's testimony time. The Bible says that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of testimony. Now, I have a testifier here already, but I'm going to give two more persons opportunity. So, the first two to get to the front, along with our sister, Sister Mabel, Akro Botu, please come forward for testimony. And uh, the first two, one, one more person. Okay, one more person is allowed. Amen. Praise the Lord. You have one minute. Praise the Lord. I've been holding this testimony and, and I, I really need to give it. On, I entered Ghana on the 31st night and before then I was having some pain in my left breast. And I, I was wondering where it's coming from. And then I was like, I must, because when we came, we came in really late on the 31st night, but I was saying I must enter um, the, yeah, the video. And I was believing God that I won't enter 2019 with that pain. And when I came here and pastor prayed, it disappeared instantly. I, I haven't felt it since then. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I give glory to the Lord for the salvation of my soul and even directing me into this wonderful church. 
In fact, my life has never been the same since I entered this church. I came from a church when they told us not to recognize the devil. He doesn't exist. Pay attention on the word of God. And that is all that I know. And I was going through a lot of challenges. I do cry a lot on my bed. I say, Lord, why me and my children? But since I entered this church, my life has never been the same. Pastor told us that what they normally do is fasting and prayer. And I held to that. And the word of God that comes with it, I've been praying to God. And God changing, started changing things around me and my children. God has turned my life around. I say to the glory, he's a faithful God. I thank him so much. He has been so, so faithful to me. He has been so good to me. I thank him. The challenges in 2018, the devil wanted to pull me down, to be, be bedridden through accident or even incident. Even I fell down in my room. But the strong hand of the Lord always delivered me. The strong of the heart. I, I was nearly knocked down by a car. And where I was standing wasn't by the roadside. But the Lord delivered me. All those who stand, stood there, they say, ah, this woman, you are extraordinary. The hand of the Lord is upon you. Father, I thank you. I bless your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Isn't God great? Let's stretch our hand to them and let's thank God for their life. Let's pray that their testimony will be permanent. And for every one of us believing God for one thing or the other, we will be eating the mark on the mark. God will be doing a miraculous for us instantly as we desire. Father, we worship your holy name. Thank you, Lord Almighty God, for the great miracles you have done in the life of your people. Father, we ask that the miracle shall be permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, we have some people that are worshiping with us for the very first time on a glorious day like this, second Sunday in the month of January 2019. If today is your first time on a Sunday morning like this, please, can you wave your hand? We want to give you a special welcome. Please, can you wave the hand higher and higher? Choir, please. Welcome the usher is going to direct you. Please, be on your feet. Can we rise? To the fountain. To the fountain of his love. As you worship with us. As you worship with us. We believe your life will remain the same. Your life will remain the same. She won't welcome. Welcome in Jesus' name. This is our CCG ambassador. Immediately after the service, our special hospitality people will meet with you. You are welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Choir. Hallelujah. God is so great. So is the creation of his hand. You know, the Bible says that the mountains tremble, you know, at the, at the sound or at the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord moves upon many waters. You know, everything he has created is made for his pleasure and they all worship him. So what is stopping we humans, whom he has called, his work, his workmanship, his masterpiece, what is holding us back from worshiping? and serving the Lord. I pray that as we listen to this song, may it minister unto your soul, unto your spirit man, and you'll just see God in another light, a new dimension. In Jesus' name be blessed. Creation, there in the dark. 
spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonders of the light. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planet.
amount to your desire. Tell your neighbors that God has promised, and His promise will never fail. He has promised, He will never fail. Without the instrument, I will go on. Can we sing it prayerfully? He has promised, He will never fail. His faithfulness is forevermore. His faithfulness is forevermore. He has promised. He has promised. He will never fail. I will follow him. Oh. I will follow him. He has promised he will never fail. His faithfulness is forevermore. His faithfulness. If God has ever promised you anything, lift up your hand and just thank him this morning. Tell him that he will never fail. He will not fail you in 2019. Lift up your voice to him and say, Daddy, you have promised you will never fail. You have promised me life. Therefore, I will live. I will not die. He covers. You have promised me prosperity. I will not be poor this year. You have promised me transformation this year. My life, my family, my business, your church will be transformed. No evil shall befall me. I will dwell in the sacred places of the Most High. No calamity, no tragedy, no accident for me and my family. Thank you, Father Lord. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Now lift up your right hand and pray this prayer again. Say, my father, my father. That breakthrough. That promotion. That you have promised me. Shall not remain only in the dream. It shall manifest this year. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Whatever you have promised God's people we never remain in the dream alone. Masuka hi galaga baba. I will live, I will not die. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Heavenly Father, have your way this morning. Speak through me, Holy Spirit, and let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's be seated. Joshua 21, verse 45. Joshua 21. There faileth not out of any good thing which the Lord has spoken on the house of Israel. All. Oh, Somebody say all. All what? All did what? All came to pass. Can I have one or two translations of this? The Holy Spirit breathed upon his wall this morning and helped me to pass this message across so that whatever God has promised us this year, everything. Look at your neighbor and say, whatever God has said he will do in 2019, in the name of Jesus Christ, everything. We do what? Will come to pass in your life. Not a single one of all the good promises of the Lord as given to the family of ambassador. If you are saying him and say better him was left unfulfilled. Everything he has spoken came true. Can you please prophesy and pray for your neighbor and say, not a single one of all the good promise God has promised your family, everything, by the mercy of God, by the grace of God, we do what? Come to pass this year. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. Everything. Ah, ah. And we still serve that same. He said, not a single one of all the good promises. I love that. The Lord has given to the family. Put your name there. The family of Jordan. The family of... Uh, put your name there. Everything that God has said concerning the family of ambassadors, we do what? We come to pass this year. If you believe that, say, hey, better amen. So what are the things that we must do so that this scripture will be fulfilled in our life this morning? If I have time, I will, be, I will complete the message. If not, maybe some other time on the second service. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If everything God has promised a nation of Israel should come to pass, then everything God has promised us to, we should do what? Should come to pass. Uh, a whole nation of Israel. God promised them and all the good promises in the scripture that we've just read came to pass. And we are told that God is what? Is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So why is it that what, everything that God has promised us, we are still expecting it? Sometimes God has promised some people some things 20 years ago and it's not yet to be fulfilled. Why are they not coming to pass? That's the key. That's the things we want to do in the, in the service. Everything. What a good scripture. The first thing I want us to look is that we must believe in ourselves. One of the things that makes 
prophecy or promises of God to come to pass is that we must believe in ourselves. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I love what the, the Paul said. He said what? I can do all things. Can we say it together? I can do all things through what? We must believe in ourselves. We must believe we can do all things. If you don't believe it, no matter what God has said that will come to pass in your life, may not be able to. So the first thing that I want you to know this morning is that you must believe in yourself that you can do it. You must believe in yourself that you will do what? You can make it this year. Lift up your hand and say, I believe in myself by the grace of God. I can do all things through what? I can meet the target. I can exceed the target. In fact, we serve a God that exceeds targets. God that is more than able to do above that we have even imagined. So I will exceed target this year. I can do all things. I will make it in the name of Jesus Christ. In Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, God help me this morning to pass this message across. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Not knowledge of God or knowledge of, of the word of God, but my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I read a translation that says, destruction has overtaken my people because they have no knowledge. Destruction has overtaken my people because they have no knowledge. I read another translation that says, cut off have been my people for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And one of the things I've realized in this world is that the easiest way to be cut off from people or from society is if they find out that you have no knowledge. Anyone that doesn't have knowledge can easily be cut off from this generation, especially this generation. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. One of the things that make this prophecy to be fulfilled is to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, you cannot achieve anything, no matter what God has said. And also, you need to know, you need to have a knowledge. You must be able to know yourself. That's where I'm going this morning. You must be able to know yourself. Nobody knows you better than yourself. Can you hear me preach to your neighbor? Say, nobody knows you better than yourself. You know yourself. I know myself. I know myself. I'm talking about yourself. Believing in yourself. I know myself. You must know what you are vulnerable to. Nobody can deceive you. Your, in, your, your weakness, I know my weaknesses, I know my strength, I know myself. If those promises are going to be fulfilled, you must be able to really examine yourself. Self-analysis is one of the most important things a Christian should always do. Self-analysis. I'm telling you many a times I will sit down and I will analyze myself. I know myself. I know my weaknesses. I know my strength. You know what you are vulnerable to. You know what can easily distract you. You know. So if you want these promises to come to pass, you must know yourself. Don't let anybody deceive you. You must sit down and analyze yourself this year. 
What everything God promised the nation of Israel in Joshua that we read came to pass. You must know yourself. And so, having succeeded in taking proper analysis of yourself, then you can begin to, to speak to yourself. I can make it. I'm going somewhere this year. I will not fail that exam this year. I can do it. I can make it. You need to elevate your mind in order to reach that right attitude of believing in yourself. In fact, some of us this year, we must learn to take responsibilities. God is not a magician. It has to do with who? With ourselves. A man was constantly going to the house of a prostitute. And he came for deliverance several times, but he still, he will still go and meet prostitutes. Until one day, he met a correct man of God, and he said to him that when you get to the house of the prostitute, are you the one? Is anybody pushing you to the house? So when you get there, close your eyes and say, oh yeah? Take me, let that spirit take me to the house or to the room of the prostitute. And you will discover that many a times we are the one who walk into it ourselves. You know yourself. Then you need to examine yourself, analyze yourself. Where you are missing it this year. There are things that the pastor will not do for you. Complete analyze what are you doing wrong. It has to be a decision from you. Stop blaming the pastors. Stop blaming the church. Some of us are saying hey, it's because the church is not prayerful. The pastor is not fire. There is this. You continue to blame people for the, the, the things that you are causing by yourself. Don't apportion blames this year. There are some things that you need to do yourself for these promises to come to pass. That man at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years, he was blaming somebody else for his calamity. He said, any time that I try to move into the pool, someone else will push me. He was blaming people, he was blaming somebody for 38 years, and he could not do anything for 38 years because he was blaming somebody. Stop apportioning blames. Look at your life, look at yourself this year. How can you be somewhere for 38 years and you are not moving forward and you are blaming people for your life? Even if, if nobody helps you for 38 years, why are you going to roll yourself? Or why, uh, call the destitute to please push me in there. You must be able to do something for 38 years. Stop blaming your parents. They have done their best. Stop blaming the pastors. A lot of us blame the pastor on the internet. Everywhere blaming the pastor. And the problem is yourself. Look at yourself. Analyze yourself. Do I eat too much? Do I sleep too much? Am I lazy? It's very important, I'm telling you. If you are going somewhere. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not God's fault. <laughs> I can't hear you. Say, it's not my parents' fault. Say, it's not even the government's fault. <laughs> Look at your life. Sit down. This is January. There is nothing like we read in Joshua 21, 45 that God promises the people of Israel that did not come to pass. Nothing. So why is it that what God has promised you has not come to pass? It has to do with you. 
laziness. Not the church. A lot of people blame the church. If there's no fire there, we don't pray there. We don't, uh, we don't, I don't hear correct word there. No. Start with yourself. Not jumping from one church to another. Most times the problem is you, not your husband. Not your wife. A complete analysis of ourselves. And then when you look at that, then you begin to see and begin to speak to yourself. I had a story of a drunkard who was walking home after a day drunk and he decided to take a shortcut to his house. We are told that when he was walking across the, 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 the cemetery, he fell into an open grave. And because of rain, it was muddy, he couldn't climb off from the grave, from the, from the, from the pit. And we are told about two hours after that, another drunkard <laughs> was coming and he also fell to the pit. But the second one said, he said suddenly he had a voice out of darkness that says you will never get up. He just had a voice. He said he will never get up. But he said he made up his mind that whatever the voice, he will still climb out of the, out of the pit. And he did. But it's, the first one was there, and he, was, he said, in fact, when he tried, we are told that he just sat down at the corner of the place. Of the place. So after all, I have tried to come out. I cannot, and you know he was drunk too. And he had a voice. Another person had a voice. You cannot get out of this place. I speak to somebody here. That voice that is saying that you will never get out of your problem this year. If you can say better hear me, I silence that voice with the blood of Jesus. I can't hear you say better hear me. I say every voice. Every voice that is saying that you will remain on the same spot. Every voice that is saying that what God has promised you this year will not be fulfilled. If you can say better hear me, the, the almighty God will silence that voice in Jesus name. Say, my father, my father, every voice of opposition, every voice that said I will not come out of my problem, every voice that said that my life will not change this year, I silence that voice by the power in the blood of Jesus. Lift up your hands here, I will make it. Say, this year I'm climbing up, I'm leaving the pit. I'm not going to blame anybody. I can do all things. Say, I will do it this year. Because God will do what? God will strengthen me. I can do all things. So the first thing has to do with yourself. Can you say it again? Put your hand on it and say, say, I will make it this year. Say, I'm climbing up this year. I'm fulfilling my dreams this year. This year is going to be better than, than last year for me. I will not be at the back this year. I'm coming to the forefront this year. I will do it. I will not taste this this year. Say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Say, I will and I will. Say, by the grace of God, I will become what God wants me to be this year. I can do all things. We have good examples. There's a man called Abraham Lansley. He was, he was once believed to be retarded. He wanted to be an artist. And they told him, Abraham, or Abraham, you have no future as an artist. But we are told today that Abraham Lansley is one of the best artists in the world. Say, I can become what God says I will become. I can do it. I can do it. Martin Luther King was also told as a boy, you have no hope of ever being a public speaker. But we heard that Martin Luther King was one of the best public speakers that we can ever have. But there was a time in his life that was told he cannot do it, he cannot speak. You, 
You will speak, and people will hear. You, with that kind of English. But he said what? He said, I can do all things. Exodus chapter 3, verse 11. Moses was also said, he said, I am a stammerer. I can't do anything. How will I lead people? God's strength is sufficient in weakness, says the Lord. And Moses said, oh God, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh? That I should bring forth the children of Israel. Who am I? But God said, what? You can do it. Look at your neighbor and say, you can do it. I don't like the way you are saying, you can do it. Say, you, are, you will make it. Can I hear you say, you can do it and you can make it. Say, this is your year. yourself complete analysis of yourself I can make it I can do it in knowledge of yourself my people perish because they lack knowledge you can go places you can move mountains you can be what God wants you to be the first thing is that you must believe in yourself. This year, believe in yourself that you can do it. You can pass the exam. You can have first class. You can get that international job. You can meet that target. You can exceed that target that you have set for, for yourself this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say it again. Say, I can do all things. Because God will strengthen me in this year. If you believe that, say, hey, better, amen. amen. I don't like that, amen. If you believe that, say, hey, better, amen. amen. And then number two, because of time, is that you believe in the prophet. Second Chronicles 20, verse 20. Believe in yourself that you can do it and then you will do it. Second Chronicles 20, 20 And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehovah stood and he said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. And you shall do what? You shall est be established. Believe in the prophet. And so shall you do what? Prosper. See, after believing in yourself, the next thing is that believe in your prophet. Tell your neighbor, say, believe in your prophet. Everything that God has said this year through the mouth of the prophet, what do you do? You believe in it. You cannot benefit from a prophecy if you don't believe the prophet. Let me tell you, your neighbor says you cannot benefit from a prophecy if you don't believe in the prophet. How many of you have heard prophecy from this altar? If you don't believe in the prophet that God has placed here, it will not happen. The first thing is to believe in yourself and then believe there is no government, there is no prophet, there is no pastor. I'm talking of the new one that is not placed by God. Never let anyone you don't believe in to pray for you. Let me minister to uh, preach to your neighbor. Say, don't let anyone that you don't believe in the person to do what? To pray for you. So why are you praying? Why are you coming to the church if you don't believe the prophet? 
Believe in God, that shall be established. Believe in the prophet. And thou shall prosper. How will you allow somebody you don't believe in and you are kneeling down and say the person should pray for you? And the person is praying and you are saying amen. It, it doesn't work. If you want to prosper, then go and stay under a man of God or a ministry that you believe in the prophet. No matter what anybody says concerning Pastor Adeboe, I believe in him. He's my daddy. And I believe in the prophecy that he has released in 2019. If you don't believe in your man of God, in your prophet, you don't need to be, you cannot prosper under that ministry. I tell people, if you have issue with your prophet, sort it out. When you have a pastor and you are not believing in him, you are not in the same spirit with that person, it is scriptural, it will be very, 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 very difficult for such a person to prosper under that grace. Leave the church and go to a prophet that you believe in him. This is the beginning of the year. If you don't believe in what you are doing here, leave this place. But I can tell you, if you believe, there's no way. If you don't doubt it, you don't doubt God's servant here, that God has placed here, and his wife, and the ministers of God here, I can tell you there's no way that you can escape prosperity in 2019. So believe in the prophet. Don't doubt the prophet of God. I give you an example to the glory of God. Two people came to, to meet me, maybe sometimes in last, last year. And I said, Pastor, please we started this in, and it failed. And now we believe, they started, we believe in your ministry. We believe you as, as a, a, a prophet of God. We are going again. Pray for us. After Tuesday, they came Tuesday, I prayed for them and they left. About two or three days ago, somebody was calling me. He said, Pastor, send, send your account number. Send uh, what? Which? He said, now, now, now. Send. It, was, it was, I said, ah, which word is this? Why, we, why are you so in a hurry to bless the man of God? Then he said, the restaurant is now, uh, what did he use? He used the word. Booming. That's not, that's not the word he used. He said the restaurant is, has got, he used one English word. If I look, if I see my phone, I will, I will tell you. And what, what, what happened? They started a business of restaurants, a restaurant business in China. African restaurant food in China, and it failed, they collapsed. So they came again, and this time around, they came with the cook. They said, Pastor, we are going back. And this is a, they are Ghanaians. This are the cook, this is the cook that we cook for us. Oh, please. So I said, okay, stretch forth your hand. I bless the hand of the cook. I bless them, I pray, and they left. After three or four months, they said, Pastor, we have never seen this name before. Why? Because they believe in the prophet. I prayed for them. I said, not only in China do we have branches of those restaurants in Asia. If you believe in your prophet, no matter how small the prophecy is, it will prosper in your life. I decree to as many that believe in the grace, you believe in this church, in the redeemed Christian church of God, this year you will not escape prosperity. Whatever you lay your hands upon this year shall prosper. Under that testimony, it shall prosper. 
go and ask people that believe in this grace and see where they are today. Believe in the prophets. Don't doubt it. These are the secrets why whatever the prophecy has come, it will come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Not only believe in the prophecy, the prophet, then you also believe. You celebrate the prophet. First, uh, you celebrate the prophecy. Not the prophet, the, the prophecy. First, first, test, uh, first Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. Look at it. It says, This charge I commit on thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them might do what? War! A good warfare. Not only to believe in the prophecy or the or the the, 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 the the man of God, the prophet, but you should do what? You should war the prophecy into manifestation. There are prophecies this year, is a year of glory, year of greater glory, year of restoration, year of so, so many prophecies that has come forth. Don't just believe in the prophet. Don't just believe in the prophecy. What do you do? You war. You war. What they did in Second Timothy, in Second Chronicle 20, 20 that we read, what they did to that prophecy is that they war into its fulfillment. And how did they war into fulfillment? Worship. They worship. They worship. The Bible says it was a prophecy. The prophecy came that believe in God, thou shalt establish, believe in the prophets, you shall prosper. And then they go to war. And the war was started with the worship. They worship God. They say, for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. The, the musicians, the one in one accord, they were worshiping. They were worship is a war. It's a war. One of the greatest and the strongest warfare, uh, instrument of warfare is what? Is worship. So don't just sit down and say, the, that the Jew or pastor has said, this is my year. This is the year of this thing. And you just sit down. You don't believe in yourself. You don't believe in the man of God that has prophesied. Not only sit down, but do what you war. That was what Paul was saying. Can I have another translation of it? I have it moment in 1 Timothy 1, 18. He, he war into it. He said, Timothy, my son, here are my instructions. I like that for you. Based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier, may they help you fight well in the Lord's path. So tell your neighbor, say that prophetic word is for you to fight. Use it to fight. Don't sit down. Say, God, your, your man of, the man of God, the prophet has said, this is my year of restoration. Then war into it. Everything that the devil has told in my life, I'm recovering it this year. You war into it. You war into it through prayer, and you war into it through what? Through worship. And you see it coming to pass. He said, everything God has spoken concerning the people of Israel, what happened? Everything came to pass. Why? Number one, they believe in themselves. They believe in the prophet. And the war, they were worshiping God. Warfare worship. It's not just worship, and you do this, not the one that you do in church, the one that you lock up yourself for one, one hour in the room and worship God. That this prophecy, Lord, must come to pass in my life. I will not do that for you. Tell your neighbor, say, No, Pastor, we do that for you. What do you do to those prophecies to come to pass? You war into it. Fight where? In the Lord battle. 
And what does you do to the prophecy because of time? Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, it will obey the prophetic instructions or the prophetic conditions that are attached to it. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord, thy God, and observe to do all what? All the commandments which I command this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations. Verse 2, verse, verse 2, quickly. And these blessings shall do what? Shall come to thee. And did what? One of the things we said during the vigil is that this is going to be a year of what? Of overtaking. But it, can, it comes with a condition. And that condition in verse 1. He said, if thou shall hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord, and do what? And observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee, that the Lord will do what? Will set thee on that. So all the prophecy will come to pass if you do what I have asked you to do this year. And I'm saying this this morning so that by December 31st, 2019, all the promises of God for your life will have been fulfilled. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. And so what do you do? First of all, believe in yourself. I will make it this year. I can do it. And do what? Self-analysis. And then believe in the prophet. A man of God that you don't believe in him, don't, don't put your head down to pray for him. It will work. Obey the conditions that are attached to this prophetic declaration. He said to John, Jesus' mother said to them, whatever he has you to do, you should do what? Do it. In John chapter 2, obey the conditions. And you will see what God to do. Number three, quickly, what do I have to do for this prophecy in 2019 to come to pass? Because a lot of you people just say, God has promised you this thing. You are excited about it. We are not in church to psych people up. I'm not a pastor that I want to psych you up. I want it to happen in your life. Not that every Sunday you just jump up, you dance. Hey! And by 31st, you keep on dancing and no prophecy, no promise has come to pass. No. Then we have failed in that assignment as a pastor. But you need to listen to these conditions. Believe in yourself. I can succeed. That, that, that example I gave they went first to China and they failed. They were lamenting my office, the church office. We spent, Pastor, we spent a lot of money. The first time they were going, they didn't tell me. If you're hacking diligently, I'm not God. They didn't tell me. It was when they failed. That's why I've told you that whatever you are starting this year, start with God. He said, we spent ah, a lot of money. And nothing happened. But this, in fact, they so much believe that prayer that they came with a lady, a cook. They said, this is going to be the cook. And I gave a prophecy. I said, the place we, we, we blow some, more, but take care of this cook. If you don't take care of this cook, it will, she will leave. And sat out. <laughs> That's what I told them. Take care of this cook. They committed it again. Whatever failed in 2019, in 2018, what do you do in this January? Commit it afresh to God. Obey diligently. Okay. Under four months, 
He said, they have not seen this again. They have not seen, he said, it, it have, they have never seen such a thing before. I'm talking of China. A restaurant. Whatever you lay your hands on, if you believe me, you believe in this ministry, you believe Pastor Yadeboye, whatever you lay your hands upon this year, if you can say better, amen, it must prosper. I say it will prosper. No devil shall hinder your expectation from coming to pass this year. Let me pray for your neighbor. Say, no devil in the name of Jesus shall hinder your expectation from coming to pass in 2019. Whatever God has promised you, if you can say better, amen, it shall come to pass. And lastly, believe in God. If you believe in your prophet, that shall be prosper. Let's, go, let's look it again. If you believe, 2 Chronicles 20, 20, if you believe in God, believe in the Lord your God and you do what? It shall be established. Believe that God is a rewarder. In Hebrews chapter 6, because of time, if you read from verse 10, to 12. He said, God is a rewarder. God is not unrighteous to forget the, your work and labor of law. Believe that God is a rewarder. Is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Possess. I put this down. He said, possessing a revelation of God's word. Possessing a revelation of God's word. So strong that it provokes strong conviction and confidence in God. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Quickly, Jeremiah 33, verse 3. My time is up. Say, call unto me, and I will do what? I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which you have never known in 2019. Believe in God. He can never lie. Believe that this year, whatever God has promised, Numbers 23 verse 19, believe in God. Let's look at it. Numbers 23 verse 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. As he said, shall he not do it? As he spoken, shall he not make it good? Believe in God. 1 Samuel 15 verse 29 believe that God will do he can't lie God is not a man he said and also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent for he is not a man that will repent believe in yourself number one believe in your prophet number two and do what believe that God is a rewarder. You will not labor in vain. Believe it. Believe that God is taking you to another level. Believe that this is your year of transformation. Believe that things must change for you and your family this year. Believe God. And that's why God said, we go back to our text, Joshua 21 verse 45. And then can we please be on our feet? Joshua 21, I'm, I'm done. Joshua 21 verse 45. It says, there fell not out of any good things which the Lord has spoken, the whole came to pass. Give me another, God, what does the message translation say? But you need to know what those three things. Tell your neighbor those three keys. What are those three keys? Believe in yourself. You are a man, believe in yourself. Believe in the prophet of God. And then believe in God. Not one word fail from the good work of God spoken to the house of peace. Everything came out right. Everything will come out right for you and your family this year. The way you are saying him and you are saying it as if you don't believe. I say everything will come out right. 
for you and your family this year. Everything will come out right for you in your business this year. As many that are doing one project or another, everything will come out right for you in that project. If you can say better him, everything will come right out for you. For your children this year, they will not fail again. You will not weep over your children in the name of Jesus Christ. Say, I believe you, God. Everything will come out right for me. Lift up your hand and just worship him this morning. Thank you, Father Lord. Thank you, Father Lord. Thank you, Father Lord. Glory be to God. Nobody is permitted to stop you this year. Believe God, O oh Lord. Have faith in God. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Before I take my seat, Jeremiah 33, verse 3, say, call upon him. Let's look at it. I give you just one second to call upon your God this morning. Call upon me and I will answer thee and show you great and mighty name. Say, Father, I believe in you this morning. And I'm calling upon you. I put my hope and trust that this year will be better for me. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. Call upon him. And if you are here this morning, you are living in sin. Call upon this same God for mercy now. Call upon him for mercy. Say, Lord, have mercy upon me. Have mercy. Let this year be a different. Call upon, call upon God for mercy. Please be merciful, Lord. All head bowed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. All head bowed and all, head, all eyes closed. Father, I've spoken your word. That I should tell your people that prophecy can come to pass. Everything God has spoken. As it did. As you did in the life of the Israelites. Everything came to pass. And I've told them the key. They should believe in themselves. They should believe in the prophet. And they should believe in God. And there are people here who want to call upon you. Probably before they don't believe in you. Which is the most important thing. They don't put their trust in you. That's why they fail. That restaurant business failed because they didn't put their trust in God. But they came back and said, God, we cannot start. I'm not going to start anything without you. All at bow. If you're in that category, you want to say, this time around, I want to start afresh with you. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do that project. I don't want to do without you, God. In the beginning, God. In Genesis 1, 1, the three first words in the Bible is in the beginning, God. The three first words in the Bible is in the beginning, God. This is the beginning of year 2019. And you want to say, God, I want to begin with you. I've made a mistake in the past. I didn't start with you. I thought I can do it on my own. Lift up your hand. I want to pray with you quickly before I take my seat. There are hands every, at the back. Quickly, quickly, I will pray with you. Say, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm going to start afresh with you. I put my hope and my trust in you. Lift those hands up properly. Or rather, you are saying, I want to rededicate my life to you, God. I believe in you, but I left, but I want to come back in 2019. Have mercy upon me. Lift it down properly. Is there anybody lifting up? There's a woman in the front. Lift it up above your head. I want them to give you a card. Quickly, quickly. There's a woman in the front. Don't be shy about it. Whatever failed in 2018 will not fail in 2019. But you need to believe God. Lift it up properly. Father, I thank you for those arms that are lifted up. Have mercy, O Lord. If they have trusted in themselves or other gods, please forgive them this morning. They are starting afresh with you this year. Take care of their needs. 
Let your name alone be glorified. You have promised you will never fail. Thank you, ancient of days. Have mercy upon them. If paraventure, maybe because of sin, please forgive them of their sins. And write their names in the book of, in the book of life. Thank you, ancient of days. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Quickly, if you have with your tithe, please come forward with your tithe. And then the, the other people, bless them, bring out their offering quickly. If you are here with your tithe, please come forward with your tithe. One of the things that I can, by the grace of God, God will guarantee what he wants to do is this year is to live a life of holiness and pay your tithe. Not only if you believe your prophet and you don't pay your tithe, it may be difficult for such person to prosper. I'm telling you the truth. But for every tithe pay us in the church, get ready for abundance in 2019. Lift up your tithe and say, I believe in you, God. And I believe in the prophet. And that's why I'm paying my tithe according to your word. Please make this year fruitful for me. Open your mouth and tell God that whatever you have promised me, especially in the area of my finances, in my blessings, please I use this tithe as a point of contact this year. Let it be a great abundance for me. Fight the devil over my finances. I will not end up in shame financially this year. I can tell you this year is almost two weeks gone. Two weeks has already gone in this year. Make a difference in my life this year financially. I will not beg for bread. I will not beg for money. I ask for transformation in the area of my finances. Thank you, Father Lord. I will continue to believe in you, God, and also believe in myself that I can make it. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's drop, the, let's drop it on the altar. God bless you. And let's take our offering quickly as we listen to this announcement. Let's bring our offering. God bless us. Praise the Lord. Let's stretch our hand to us, our pastor, and pray for him that as he has watered us, God will water him back. His ministry will not go down. He will continue to grow in strength, in strength, in knowledge, in understanding. Let's commit his family, his ministry, and pray for him that he will see the truth. He will go. He will kneel. He will see and believe. And God will continue to strengthen him. He will go from glory to glory, honor to honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. We want to recognize those who are fellowshipping with us in the course of the service. If you are just coming, we have already ushered those who fellowship with us for the first time. We want to give opportunity to them. If you come in the course of the service, and this, today is the first time of coming, please can you just rise up, carry your bag, and the Bible you come with. Please, we want to recognize you and appreciate you for coming. Please, do you have anyone in the house that are just coming to the service now? Okay, thank you. You can join them there. We have a special seat for them. Uh, let's appreciate them for coming. Let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate them. We thank you for coming. May God bless you. God has, has ordered you continue to order your step in Jesus' name. Let's appreciate them. And also, it is an opportunity for the, our hospitality department to usher them for a reception. After this, please, can they be ushered into the reception, please? Let's give them a royal welcome, please. As they go for reception, please. Hospitality department, can you just take them? Thank you. Thank you. Can you just follow our hospitality for the reception? Thank God. Let's stretch our hands towards this offering and ask God that God should be acceptable to God's hand. 
and God that pro will continue to prosper our ways. The pocket that brought this thing will never dry run in Jesus' name. God will to continue to increase us hundredfold. And this year is the year of enlargement, is the year of an increase. We continue to increase in all angle in Jesus. Financially, spiritually, we continue to increase. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's listen to the following announcement. Every Tuesday, between hours of 9 to 12 p.m., we have victory hours. Between 9 to 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. every Tuesday. Then every Wednesday, we have digging deep, divine instruction. And we are talking about month of praise. And today, to Wednesday's topic is praising your way through the storm. Last week, Wednesday, we talked about benefit of praise. For those of us that were around, we know why we need to pray and the benefit that comes with praise. And to, on Wednesday, we'll be talking about praise your way through the storm. And it's between hours of 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Evangelism comes up every Saturday, so please be there. 4 p.m., we meet in church, or, uh, church premises to go to wherever we are destined to go. And our Sunday service still remains at this. First service, 7.30 to 9.30. Then Sunday school is 9.30 to 10.30. Immediately after this first service, there's going to be Sunday school. We are encouraged to be part of it. It's the only place where you can ask questions and you get an answer. May God bless you as you wait to. I don't expect people to go out after this service. Please, be part of Sunday school. God bless you as you do so. Second service remains at 10.30 to 12.30. And also our fasting for the year 2019 has started. Today is the third day. We are doing 49 days. And uh, the church has given me feel that uh, we have one hour prayers every day between hours of 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. We are encouraged to be part of it. So we are in third day now. Please, tomorrow is another day. Be part of it. It takes place here, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m., one hour alone. And also our Montorep comes up on 1st to 3rd February. And his theme is glory to glory. Ministries are daddy in the Lord, Pastor Larry, I Jorda. And also our time is 6 a.m. prom, 6 a.m. prom, from 1st to 3rd of February. Be, be part of it. And workers in the house, please know that this Friday is workers prayer VG. We should be here by 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. There's going to be workers VG. Take note of also. The province two workers retreat take place between 15 to 16 February in the church auditorium. Also, we want to encourage our church members, please. We want to have the data of our members and uh, we go to publish and put it on the notice board, the website where you are going to register your name, your number, your email. Please do so. We want to have our church members' records updated. You can see the, the, the link there. Please, can you just project it again? Let them take note of that. It's very, very important that we have the database of our church member. God bless you as you do so. Those who are interested in joining the following department, decoration and drama, Those who are in, interested in joining the following department, decoration and drama, should see Sister Emma Ogudare for decoration department. Sister Emma, they are in the church today. Let them identify. Please, can you just rise up, please? Please. This is Sister Emma Ogudare for decoration. Both male and female are welcome, please. It's not only for female alone. Males are welcome, please take note. And also, Brother Edwin for the drama and dancing department. If you are interested in drama and dancing department, that's Brother Edwin. Please. Go and see him. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Also, our men, please take note. Immediately after this uh, service, there is going to be a short prayer with the pastor. It is our norm to pray after the service. Please take note of that. And also, our fellowship takes place at the various center every Sunday except Thanksgiving Sunday, 6 p.m. Please, let's belong to our fellowship. May God bless us in Jesus' name. We appreciate those who are fellowshipping, watching us online. We pray God will continue to be with us in Jesus' name. We are also online on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and website. Let us rise. Let's thank God for the service. Let's appreciate for God for what he has done. Let's commit this week unto God's hand that this will be a week of abundant life, a week, a week of progress, and we all meet our target in Jesus' name. We will go well and come back well in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.